Dominic Teams 2021, I have been waiting to talk about this for a very long time. I really probably should have done this video after his first round loss at Roland Garros, which was really when I was inclined to doing so, but here we are now, and his nightmare season has just gotten even worse. If you're unaware, in Team's first grass court action of this year in Mallorca, he injured his wrist, which is one of the scarier injuries in tennis. And it's really unfortunate because he was playing one of his better matches in quite a while. He was totally in control up 5-2 against Adrian Manorino and he ended up injuring his wrist just going for a running forehand that pretty routine the shot that he hits all the time but seemed like he immediately felt some pain in the wrist and made the right decision on retiring from the match right there as i said before wrist injuries can be really scary in tennis we've seen the most prominent example of that being how they derailed the career of juan martin del potro the severity of team's injury remains to be seen. We haven't gotten anything confirmed, but at the moment, his Wimbledon participation looks to be up in the air. I'd probably lean that he's not going to play Wimbledon, and it's just piled on to what has been a very difficult, injury-riddled, and mentally taxing season for Dominic Team. We haven't really seen him hit a low like this ever since he became an elite player in 2016. It's been a very, very long time. It's kind of carried over ever since his US Open when really he went from the absolute pinnacle of his career in September winning the US Open to what I can only describe as a very gradual descent into the sport spiraling out of control worst stretch of his career coming off of the two french open finals in 2018 and 2019 he failed to make the final and failed to make the semi-finals of the french open for the first time since i believe 2015 but we all gave him a pass and rightfully so he deserved a pass for that he made the quarters a couple of iffy results against Hugo Gaston and losing in five to Diego Schwartzman, but Diego was playing probably the best clay court tennis of his life last last fall and still it took almost five hours for him to beat team and team was coming off of that US Open when not too long before that French Open so we gave him a pass there he ran into some issues with his foot through the fall indoor hardcourt swing kind of seemed like he was content with just cruising till the end of the year and focusing his efforts on the next year after a loss in his home tournament of vienna but then he really played in retrospect his only elite level tournament since the us open in the world tour finals it was very impressive just like the year prior in 2019 he made the finals and did so by beating Nadal, Djokovic, Tsitsipas and ultimately giving a good fight to the eventual champion Daniil Medvedev who went undefeated at the tournament. So closing the year like that albeit he didn't get the win at the World Tour Finals it did seem like he was back on track. Sure, he may have tailed off post US Open just a little bit, but it was nothing alarming and certainly after that reassuring World Tour Finals performance, it seemed like he would be all good to go in 2021. We got to 2021, he played a really good match against Nick Kyrgios, especially for the last three sets, it was very high quality. He made the fourth round, aside from that match with little issue, and then put in an absolute stinker against Grigor Dimitrov and I know that we now know that he said he was dealing with some knee pain in Australia in the early part of the year knee pain and foot problems we didn't know at the time but even that 
taken into consideration. I just didn't think that Dominic Team's effort in that Dimitrov match was up to par. Even for someone playing injured, he obviously had something wrong with him. I think everybody who watched that match could tell. But there was no fight at all, and he pretty much mailed in the last two sets of that match. And this ended up really being his first bad loss at a major since probably US Open 2019 when he lost in the first round there. And at least for the next loss he took in Doha, I believe to Roberto Bautista Good. I, I think that was also a really good match and he came out on the losing end, but I wouldn't say that was a bad loss, but that bad loss would come next against Lloyd Harris in Dubai. In his first match in Dubai, he lost pretty straightforward to Lloyd Harris. I don't remember watching that match, but from that point, team decided to take a break. He wouldn't play again until May so he went from early March to May straight to Madrid from Dubai. In that time we learned a lot about what was going on with team. He disclosed those injuries that I was talking about earlier in that stretch. Uh, it forced him to miss Monte Carlo. He was slated to play Belgrade. He was slated to play Miami and not defend his title in Barcelona. I think what was more telling though, even in spite of those injuries, I'm sure that they did hinder him as much as the results said, but on top of that, he revealed some trouble that he had with motivation and how difficult it was getting for him to stay as motivated as he has been all these years chasing after that slam that elusive major title that he ended up getting in new york he described it as such a massive goal that he'd had his eye on the whole duration of his career and he didn't know if he would ever get to realize that goal, especially after being so close to dethroning Novak Djokovic at the Australian Open, having him down two sets to one there. He had gotten so close and he didn't know if he could ever get there with the big three as dominant as ever in the slams. And it had to have been a massive relief of pressure after fulfilling that at the US Open, regardless of the circumstances. Yes, context does matter there. I don't think I need to go into the specifics of that. But at the end of the day, he was a major champion and nobody can take that away from him. But after that, it's easy to get to a place where you're kind of content and if not content, at the very least find it difficult to re-energize and it looked like that roughly two month break might have been just what he needed and done just that re-energize him when he made the semis in madrid in his first tournament back he played pretty well to get there ended up flopping a little bit in that semi-final match against verev but it was easy to attribute that to just not playing so long and eventually he was probably prone to throwing in a clunker what would follow madrid however was why we've gotten to the point of being so concerned with him and what is attributed to him having a nine and nine record to this point in the year it's not really fair to throw in that last match as a loss to contribute to him being 500 on the year, but nonetheless, 9-8 and eight is certainly nothing to write home about. Played a pretty high quality match and a loss to Sanego after winning his first match in Rome, and then he decided to take a wild card into Lyon before the French Open just to get more matches under his belt, and... That went disastrous. Cam Nori has been having a career year this year. He's pretty high up in the race to Turin right now. But him clobbering team in his first match in Lyon was 
pretty much the nail in the coffin for anybody that was hoping that team by some miracle could get hot and repeat some of the success that he's had at Roland Garros over the years. That loss in particular was so alarming for me that it's the reason that I didn't have team even making the semis. I thought that he'd make the quarters. Now never did I think that he was going to be going out in the first round. Pablo Andujar is a tough first round out at the French Open, especially after his win over Federer a couple weeks sets up on Andujar and Pablo found his way all the way back into that match, winning in five. It was at that point that I felt Dominic Team is at a crossroads at this point in his career, and I felt that an even longer break than he took from March till May was necessary for him. I felt that he'd be best served to not play until summer hardcourt swing in North America. Just to kind of reevaluate his priorities and kind of just get a grip on where he feels tennis stands in his life at this point. Given his statements in the first break he took about how Mentally, he basically just didn't see tennis as everything in his life anymore like he did prior to winning the US Open. And for that reason, I just felt that he would be well served with another break. I'm certainly not old enough to speak on this from experience yet, but I remember seeing a tweet after Team's loss at Roland Garros from Matt Zemek on Twitter from Tennis with an Accent. He said in the tweet that Dominic Team has gotten to a point where a lot of everyday people find themselves and that's where you love your job, you still enjoy it, but not nearly as much as you once did when one would be more driven and just zoned in on proving themselves in this one facet of their lives. And it makes perfect sense to me. So even if it's still a concern for him nine months after the biggest win of his career, I'd say first and foremost for Dominic Team, it would be to get all that mental baggage in order. I don't think he's going to be playing Wimbledon now as a result of this wrist injury. You never want to mess with that or aggravate it. So this could end up being good for him depending on the severity of the injury, of course, but he already had made it clear he wasn't going to be participating in the Olympics this year. And he's just never been great on grass. So this could very well end up being the break that he needs in my opinion. And if he's able to come back and make that small clay court run after Wimbledon as well as the North American hardcourt swing in the summer, you could see him pile up a couple wins, get a bit more confidence there, especially given that he intends on playing a lot of those post Wimbledon clay events. I think he's going to be playing Hamburg and Kitzbühel again this year. And I certainly think if he comes in with greater clarity mentally, he has more of a scope of regaining some confidence there on clay and hard than he would on grass. Obviously, I think most of us want to see Dominic Team back at his best. You know what he can do, how gifted he is. And you don't want to see someone like him lose out on potentially a prime year of his career. So it's going to be interesting moving forward to see if Dominic Team can salvage what has been a nightmare year to this point. You hope for the best as far as his recovery from his wrist injury. But that's all I got for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. And of course, I will see you all in the next one.